don't know, and if you haven't seen it on my Cuddleton page, I actually have a cat that we've been doing something a little bit experimental with, and I'm really excited because it looks like it's working. Um, I'm very excited because it looks like it's working. We had a cat, um, now it's a cat I bred. Her name's Tiffany. She's a beautiful, beautiful black British short hair. And Tiffy, um, she was from Candy and Ralphie. I think she was in the last litter that I had from Candy and Ralphie. And Tiffy, um, her mum was nine when she got pregnant and 10 when she gave birth to Tiffany. So a really fantastic line of fabulous girls. Um, and so Tiffy um, had a couple of litters with us. And then after she was um, de sex, she went to live um, with one of our owners of another cat we bred, her mum and dad. And so Tiffy went to live um, with Janice and Greg and they loved her. They got another cat as well. Um, but in they've had her for a while now. So she's about seven, I think now. And anyway, Tiffany developed a really bad diarrhea, chronic diarrhea. Um, she obviously had some pretty serious gut problems going on. Um, she was throwing up a lot. She was losing condition. Um, she was eating ravenously. Um, and after um, a few vet visits and not being able to find a solution to the problem, and you know this this chronic diarrhea just being so bad, Tiffany actually then came back to stay with us, um, in the hope that I could you know do some um, work with my vets to try and get her better. Um, and we did a few things. We did quite a few things. We tried. Um, we did some testing. We did some. Um, treatments with different antibiotics. Um, the initial diagnosis that was really worrying was that um, her owner's vets felt that it might be lymphoma, but it, it, we've sort of worked out that it's not because of, you know, what condition she's in and how long she's been like this. So anyway, nothing was really working. Um, and so I did a little bit more research into um, IBD in cats, so irritable bowel disease, which is different to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. IBD is when it's, um, you know, really quite bad and it's basically an inflammation of the cat's gut and what they eat will just shoot through them. So we know there wasn't any bacteria in her gut because we tested for that and we treated her for that and we tried probiotics and a few other things. So I looked up, what do you do in that situation? And there's a lot of stuff that's been done that's really new that's been done for people. And I remember a documentary I had watched years ago, years ago, on um, fecal transplants. And it always struck me as funny because I'm someone that finds poop humor really <laughs> hilarious. And I thought it was funny because the guy was going to the hospital with a little um, styrofoam esky full of poop, which was going to be donated to somebody else. But it actually is a real thing and it's done in people and it's done in people that have things like C. diff, um, C. diff infections, which I've had when I was having a mastectomy, I had a C. diff infection and oh my God, that was just horrendous and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So if there's a solution to that for people with chronic um, problems, that's great. But, you know, doing it in a cat is a different story altogether. So I looked to find out if we could do anything, um, you know, if there's any products you can buy. And there are products you can buy, but they're overseas and Australia has banned the import of fecal transplant material. So we can't get the kitty biome type of things that you can get overseas. So that led me to doing more exploration and finding out that there was actually sort of a do-it-yourself route that you can do. Um, and the thing about it is when you're looking to, well, basically what it is, is it's gut bacteria. So gut bacteria, um, you know, if you lose your gut bacteria in your lower um, gut, um, you can't really replenish that population through the oral route because when you ingest the bacteria, it goes down and then your stomach acids will kill it before it makes its way to your lower intestines and to your bowel and your colon and all that kind of stuff. So you have to repopulate it in another way. And so if you can't take it down, you've got to go up. So that's basically what it comes down to. And in people, um, what people can do, and you can do it, you can have it done medically, but people have been doing a do-it-yourself version of it as well. Um, is you can make a use donor poop and make a um, capsule that you can uh, you can ingest um, the capsules as long as you can get them to go as far as possible as they can in your digestive tract. So with people, you might use frozen capsules of donor poop. Um, how are we going to get that into a cat? Was my thoughts. So I did some experimentation um, and um, we what I tried to start with was. 
I used some Don't Approve, which was actually um, my cats, Ralphie and Bobby. I don't know which one of them did it, but they are her um, brother and her father. And they poop amazing, amazing, amazing poops. They poop like Labradors. Um, and so we used, I used a little bit of their poop um, and, you know, divided it up and then dried it and used that. And what I did was I put little tiny pieces of it into creamy treats because she loved creamy treats. And again, this is a cat that was very food motivated at the time because she was, um, you know, uh, food was going straight through her. So she was quite hungry all the time and she was quite happily would eat the creamy treat. She would eat around it every now and again, but then if I stirred it up a bit and used a bit more creamy treat, she would eat the actual little tiny flecks of poop. And things got better. So her, her poop was basically liquid, 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 liquid. And it was foamy and it was mustard colored and it's stank it stank like if i didn't know better i think that she had something like a trichoconomus type um infection she didn't it was that bad um and she would just eat and then food would just shoot out of her so once she had these little dosed um creamy treats she actually did have a, a response to that and she would do a semi-solid poop and the poop would be sort of a brownie mustard instead of a bright mustard and she did the smell was getting better but it clearly wasn't enough to be making a big difference so then I talked to my vet about it and I thought I'm coming completely out of left field here and they're going to think I'm a crazy person but I spoke to um, one of the senior vets at the vet practice I go to shout out to Challenger Vets they're amazing um, Denver there and um, he said that yes he was aware of it and he had actually done it before in puppies that had had parvo because we have a puppy with parvo the treatment for that will absolutely wipe out its gut bacteria and you want to rebuild it so that was you know interesting he'd done it already um now doing it for a dog and doing it for a cat a little bit different which we'll get to in a minute um so we planned to do it and we took in i took in some donor poop from ralphie or bobby i don't know which one it was again uh, and he made a suspension out of that. So what he did was he made um, a slurry with some sterile um, saline and then that was strained and then that was put into an enema. And then Tiffany was, um, now the thing about the puppies is they had no problem inserting the enemas into the puppies and dosing the puppies um, with the poop solution. So basically it's up the butt as far as you can get it to sort of seed the um, gut tract and then the keep it there as long as possible without them pooping it out. Tiffany was a little bit less compliant because I remember Demma saying, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. We won't have to sedate her. You don't have to worry about what you feed her in the morning. I was like, mm, yeah, no, they sedated her. <laughs> so when they sedated her, I think it made it a little bit easier too because you can actually, this will sound weird, but you can actually do the enema and then you can hold the animal, the back end of the animal up so that the poop stays in there, the poop solution stays in there. It's poop solution, it's not poop. Um, so that was done. Uh, she recovered really well from that and she went home and it was a surprisingly inexpensive treatment to do as well. I guess when you're supplying your own poop. Uh, so then we, um, her owners took her home and since then I've had updates. I've had updates. We have solid poo. We have solid poos. We have solid dark brown poos. Not always dark brown. Some of them are lighter color. Um, some of them have like a bit of a sloppy chaser, if you like. But she has done actual solid poops. Like I'm not. And we've been a bit too. We've been a bit too scared to. Um, too scared to say it's working. Too scared to say we've cured her because we've had such a long journey with this cat. Um, but. If that's all we got and it resolved like that and stayed like that, it would be a miracle. So I think we now need to do another lot, um, another dose just to make sure. But it makes complete sense because Bobby and Ralphie have healthy poops because they have good gut biome. So in their lower intestinal tract, they've got the right bacteria in there to digest their, not to digest their food, to process their food and to create you know, the solid poop. There's nothing in there that's irritating their um, bowels because that good bacteria is stopping that from happening. Um, Tiffany didn't have it. It was gone. We don't know why it was gone. We don't know if it's something she ate. We don't know if it's something she had an infection or something. She didn't have anything that was the trigger for this to happen that anyone knows about. It just happened. So um, 
she doesn't have that good bacteria there anymore. That's that's the, the feeling, that's what I thought was going on. So we needed to put it back. And the only way to put it back is to go up, not to go down, basically. Um, and I'm sharing this because it's just, you know, really exciting that it's even working a little bit um, for a cat that I had a cat, um, I had two cats that had very bad guts. I had two cats that were rescue cats. We rescued, we were part of a rescue of 26 Scottish short hairs. Um, and the two boys that I ended up with, the tabbies, um, they had very ga bad guts because they had a Campylobacter infection early on that no one really treated um, until we got them and then got them well, but their guts were ruined by then. And so guts, cat, um, peep, any sort of guts has little like fine sort of, they call them cilia, they're little um, motility things that are lining the intestines and they were just basically gone in these cats I think um, <laughs> the guts must have just been completely smooth inside food just shot straight through them um, and we ended up having to it took a long time for him to get to the point where it was this bad but we did actually have to put um, Shibi down in the end because his um, IBD developed into ulcerative colitis so he was bleeding from his back end as well because his gut was just that bad now, if I had been able to do it, knowing that this was something, it wasn't a thing back then, but I just think about that cat and I think about what he went through and how this could be a solution for other people's cats. So I guess that's part of the reason that I went ahead and um, pushed to do this with Tiffany. Um, well, not really pushed, you know, like researched it and went and got my vet on board. And her owners have been amazing. They've been very happy to to give it a go and to do what we need to do and to be supportive of that as well. Um, and the reason that I wanted to do it is because this could be a solution for a future cat that I own, a future cat that I breed, or other people's cats as well. So um, for me, it was about trying something that could be shared. Now, everyone at my vets now knows that this is a possibility in a cat. So they will know if a cat comes in with a chronic problem that they might be able to do that too. So I'm excited. Um, I think I'm the only person... <laughs> Well, there might be some perverts out there, but I think I'm one of the only I'm the only person I know that gets excited when someone sends them a picture of a poo. Um, that makes me sound like a pervert. That makes me sound very weird. But yeah, I got a photo of a poo just before from Tiffany's owner, and um, I was just so excited to see it. It was a good poo. It was good. I looked at it and I was like, oh my god! I sent her a message back saying that's glorious because it was. <laughs> Poo sitting in a litter tray um, was the photo, and I got excited about that. So that's very weird. But um, as someone that has had to clean up her tray and the mess that's come out of that cat um, because of the problem that she has, that's just absolutely a miracle. Um, so, yeah, that's just something to think about. And I guess the, the fact that the creamy treat thing gave me an indication that that there was a little bit of resolution, even though it wasn't a permanent or, or a really good resolution. That's a really simple thing that somebody could do at home to try um, to see whether they could um, get some, you know, get some answers as to what's going on. Um, the, you know, I didn't do a fecal um, exam on the donor poop because those were cats that I have owned for Oh, their whole life almost and um, I know their complete history medically I know that um, the last time one of them had antibiotics was several years ago probably when Ralphie had his teeth done and aside from that nothing um, I know that they haven't had any diarrhea for a long time I know that um, the chances of them having anything bad in there that that would be passed on to Tiffany is really really low so I didn't bother with any testing in that um, but if you were doing it um, you could do that to be sure as well, to test the poop beforehand to find out if the cat's okay. But in saying that, even if you do, you do the poop test and the PCR test and everything, the PCR tests only test what is on the list of tests. So when it tells you the results, it's not telling you everything that's been found in this particular sample. It's just telling you whether or not the things on their list are in that sample. So that's something to remember as well. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about it, um, whichever you know page you're, you're watching this from or if you're watching this back later um, feel free to ask me in the comments um, and I'll provide you with some more information if you need it um, but yeah you can find out more about it just do a big google on fecal transplants there's so much information out there um, and yeah that's just what I wanted to share I'm happy 
about the poop. I'm happy to get poop photos. Please don't send me more poop photos. I don't want poop photos from everybody. I just want poop photos from Tiffany's owners. Okay, bye guys.